Welcome, dear listener, to Sleepy Time Chronicle, your sanctuary of serenity. Tonight, as the world outside gently quiets, we embark on a journey into the realm of dreams. It's a space where worries dissipate and the gentle whispers of night take over. Find your coziest spot, close your eyes, and let the soft embrace of the night envelop you. In this moment, release any lingering thoughts, for now is the time to surrender to the tranquility that awaits. Together, let us step into the embrace of slumber, where peaceful dreams eagerly await your arrival. Allow us to guide you on a journey of whimsy and wonder into the realm of bedtime stories. Embrace the tranquility and relaxation as we invite you to join Sleepy Time Chronicle, where hearts are soothed and spirits renewed. Listen closely and let us embark together on a voyage to lands of dreams and optimism. The Crocodile's Tears Chapter 1. The Misunderstood Crocodile Once upon a time, in a vast river that curled through the heart of an ancient forest, lived a crocodile whose scales shimmered like emeralds in the sunlight. Despite his majestic appearance, the crocodile led a life of solitude. The other creatures of the riverbank whispered tales of his fearsome jaws and the silent tears he shed mistaking his emotions for cunning traps rather than genuine expressions of loneliness. The crocodile, whose name was Corvus, often lay on the river's edge, watching the world go by with eyes that held a depth of unspoken stories. He longed for companionship, for someone to see beyond his intimidating exterior and understand the tender heart that beat beneath his scales. Each night, under the cloak of starlight, Corvus would speak to the moon, his only confidant. Oh dear moon, he would say, why is it that they fear me so? I wish only for friendship and to share the tales that dance within my heart. But the moon could offer no answer, only casting a silvery light that painted Corvus in a softer hue highlighting the gentle curve of his smile that no one dared to approach. One evening, as Corvus watched the river's current caress the bank, he made a decision. If they will not come to me, he thought, then I shall go to them. I will share my stories, my truths, and perhaps in my tales, they will see the real me. With a heart brimming with hope, Corvus prepared to step out of the shadows of his solitude, unaware that this choice would set in motion a tale of understanding and unity that the riverbank had never before seen. The following evening, as a sliver of a crescent moon hung in the twilight sky, Corvus settled on the riverbank, his audience of riverbank creatures assembled before him. The air was thick with anticipation. The usual nighttime chorus hushed in expectation of the crocodile's tail. My friends, Corvus began, his voice a gentle rumble like distant thunder. I wish to share with you a story from my youth, a tale that reveals the essence of my spirit. He told them of a time when he was but a hatchling exploring the vast river in search of adventure. One day, he stumbled upon a young deer caught in the thick mud at the river's edge, panic flickering in her wide, innocent eyes as she struggled to free herself. The other animals had fled at my approach, Corvus recounted. But in her eyes, I saw not fear, but a plea for help. And so I did what my heart compelled me to do. I pushed her gently to solid ground, saving her from a certain fate. 
The creatures of the riverbank listened, their eyes widening with each word. They had never imagined the fearsome crocodile as a hero in a tale of compassion and bravery. This act of kindness, Corvus continued, taught me that true strength lies not in the power of one's jewels, but in the courage to extend a helping hand to those in need. It is a lesson I have carried with me ever since. As his story concluded, the moon cast a silvery glow over the gathering, illuminating the softening expressions of his once skeptical audience. For the first time, they saw Corvus not as a predator to fear, but as a fellow creature with stories to share, stories that bridged the gap between them. In the days that followed, the riverbank buzzed with whispers of Corvus's tale. Animals that once hurried away at his approach now lingered, curiosity shining in their eyes. It was during one golden afternoon, when the sun dappled the river with light, that the change became evident. A group of young rabbits, their ears twitching with nervous excitement, hopped closer to where Corvus basked in the sun. Mr. Corvus, one bravely called out, could you share another story with us? Corvus turned his massive head towards them, and for a moment, the rabbits tensed. But then he smiled, a gentle upturn of his snout that eased their fears. Of course, my little friends, he replied, his voice as warm as the sunlit river. Gather around, and I will tell you a tale of the stars and the secrets they hold. More animals began to emerge from the shadows of the forest, drawn by the prospect of another story. They settled around Corvus, a mosaic of fur, feathers and scales, united by a shared sense of wonder. As Corvus spun his tale, a story imbued with magic and the mysteries of the night sky, the animals listened, enraptured. Through his words, they travelled to realms beyond their wildest dreams. And in those moments, the barriers between them seemed to dissolve. After the story ended, the animals lingered, not yet ready to leave the warmth of the newfound camaraderie. They asked Corvus questions, not just about his tales, but about him. And Corvus, in turn, asked about their lives, their dreams and their fears. It was an exchange of stories and truths, a weaving of lives that had once moved in parallel lines, never intersecting. But now, those lines had crossed, creating a tapestry rich with understanding and friendship. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Corvus gathered his courage. The animals of the riverbank had begun to see him in a new light, but he knew there was one more step he must take. Friends, he began, his voice carrying across the gentle ripple of the river. I have shared with you my tales, my dreams, and my memories. But now I wish to share something more, a plea for understanding. The creatures of the riverbank listened, their eyes soft and attentive. Even the smallest of insects fell silent, as if understanding the gravity of this moment. For too long, I have lived in the shadows of your fears, a prisoner of myths and misunderstandings. But the stories I've shared with you, they are the essence of who I truly am. A creature not so different from yourselves. Corvus's eyes glistened, reflecting the first stars of the evening. I ask not for unwarranted affection, but for the chance to exist among you, not as a spectre to be feared, but as a friend to be understood. Let us not judge one another by the tales told in fear, but by the truths we share in the light of understanding. 
a hush fell over the riverbank. Corvus's words, like the gentle flow of the river, had touched them deeply. In his plea, they heard not just the voice of a crocodile, but the voice of every creature who had ever felt misunderstood, judged by their appearance rather than the content of their character. As the last light of day surrendered to the velvety embrace of night, the riverbank was cloaked in a reflective silence. The creatures, from the smallest insect to the most majestic bird, sat in contemplation under the blanket of stars. Corvus's plea had planted seeds of thought that now blossomed into introspection. One by one, the animals began to share their own stories, their voices weaving through the cool night air. A once shy squirrel spoke of the fear she felt when venturing too far from her tree, revealing a vulnerability that echoed Corvus's own. An old owl, wise and revered, admitted to misjudging others based on tales and rumors rather than seeking the truth for himself. The stories poured forth, each one a thread in the rich tapestry of the riverbank's life, revealing fears, dreams, and most importantly, a shared desire for understanding and connection. The night air became a conduit for empathy, as if Corvus's plea had opened a door long closed by prejudice and fear. It was then that something remarkable happened. The animals, moved by the honesty and openness of the night's reflections, turned to Corvus with eyes that saw him anew. No longer was he a figure of fear, but a friend who had shown them the power of vulnerability and the strength found in unity. We see you, Corvus, whispered the wind, carrying the collective voice of the riverbank, not as a crocodile to be feared, but as a creature of depth and compassion, a friend we are honored to know. The stars seemed to shine a little brighter that night, reflecting the newfound understanding that illuminated the hearts of all who dwelled by the river. The barriers that had once divided them had begun to crumble, revealing the truth that in the heart of every creature there lies the capacity for kindness, empathy and love. As the night deepened and the creatures retired to their homes, a sense of peace settled over the riverbank. Corvus, his heart full, gazed at the stars, grateful for the chance to share his truth and for the unexpected gift of friendship that had blossomed in its wake. The night of reflection marked a turning point for the Riverbank community, a testament to the transformative power of understanding and the enduring bonds it can forge. It was a night that would be remembered a beacon of hope in the journey towards a world where every creature is seen, not through the lens of fear, but with the eyes of the heart. This concludes chapter one of The Crocodile's Tears, a tale of misunderstood tales, deeper emotions, and the complexities of creatures often judged by their exterior. As the story unfolds, the journey of Corvus and his friends will continue to reveal the beauty of empathy, the strength of vulnerability, and the unifying power of shared stories. Chapter Two, Tales Beneath the Surface. Once upon a time, in a lush corner of the riverbank where the reeds danced with the wind and the lilies painted the water with splashes of colour, there lived a small, fearful frog named Finley. Finley was not like the other frogs who leapt with daring bounds and croaked songs of adventure into the night. No, Finley preferred the safety of his cosy lily pad hidden away in the shadows. But the riverbank was abuzz with a new tale, one that Corvus, the crocodile with a heart as vast as the river, had begun to share. 
It was on a serene evening as the creatures of the riverbank gathered around, their eyes reflecting the twilight stars, that Corvus spoke of bravery and selflessness through the tale of Finley, the fearful frog. In a time not too long ago, Corvus began, his voice a gentle rumble. Our riverbank faced a peril unlike any before. A shadow crept over our waters, a darkness that threatened to swallow the joy and beauty of our home. It was a toxin, invisible yet deadly, poisoning our waters and wilting our plants. The animals listened, their hearts heavy with the memory of those dark times. Corvus continued. All seemed lost, for who could battle an enemy they could not see? Yet, in the heart of our smallest creature lay the seeds of courage that would save us all. Finley, the frog who had never ventured far, had watched as his home wilted under the shadow of the toxin. He knew he was small, and fear had always been his closest companion. But the love for his home stirred something within him, a spark of bravery he had never known. One night, guided by the whispers of the wind and the courage that had blossomed in his heart, Finley set out on a quest. Corvus narrated, his eyes glinting with admiration. He sought the wise old turtle, guardian of the ancient wisdom of the waters, for only she knew the secret to purifying the poison that plagued our river. The journey was fraught with challenges. Finley had to cross lands unknown, confront creatures much larger than himself, and most daunting of all, face his deepest fears. But with each leap, his courage grew, bolstered by the thought of the suffering river and the creatures he called family. Finally, after a journey that tested every ounce of his resolve, Finley reached the wise old turtle. She shared with him the secret, a rare flower, blooming only under the moon's full embrace, with the power to cleanse the waters and heal the land. With the knowledge secured, Finley raced back, the precious flower clutched tightly in his grasp. The riverbank watched in awe as this small, once fearful frog leaped into the center of the pond, releasing the flower into the waters. A glow emanated from the bloom, spreading like a wave of hope, purifying the water and restoring life to the riverbank. Corvus's voice softened. And so, Finley, the fearful frog, taught us that bravery does not come from the absence of fear, but from the decision to act despite it. His selflessness saved our home, reminding us that even the smallest among us can change the world. The creatures of the riverbank sat in silence, moved by the tale of Finley. In the eyes of each, a new light flickered, a recognition of the courage within themselves waiting just beneath the surface. The tale of the fearful frog was not just a story. It was a beacon of hope, a reminder that bravery, in its truest form, is born from the heart's ability to overcome fear for the sake of others. And on that starlit night, as Corvus's tale came to a close, the riverbank felt a little closer bound by the shared stories of courage, love, and the undying light of hope. In the heart of the ancient forest that bordered the riverbank, where the trees stretched towards the heavens and the secrets of old whispered through the leaves, there lived an eagle named Eldrin. Eldrin was majestic with feathers that shimmered like gold under the sun's caress and eyes sharp as the clearest crystal. Yet despite his beauty and strength, Eldrin harboured a discontent that shadowed his heart, envy. 
As Corvus, the wise and compassionate crocodile, continued his tales beneath the starlit sky, the creatures of the riverbank listened intently, their spirits open to the wisdom woven within each word. Tonight, Corvus began, his voice echoing the gentle flow of the river. I share with you the tale of Eldrin the Envious Eagle, a story of longing, realization, and the journey towards acceptance and self-worth. Eldrin, with his unmatched prowess in the skies, could not find peace in his heart. He envied the nightingale for her sweet song, the peacock for his vibrant tail, and even the humble turtle for her unwavering patience. In his eyes, what he possessed paled in comparison to the gifts of others, and this envy blinded him to his own splendor. One day, Corvus narrated, Eldrin's envy led him to the wise old owl, who was known to possess the ancient wisdom of the forest. O oh, wise one, Eldrin pleaded, grant me the power to sing as the nightingale, to dazzle as the peacock, to endure as the turtle, only then will I find contentment. The wise old owl, perched upon her ancient oak, regarded Eldrin with eyes that saw beyond the surface. Eldrin, she spoke, her voice as soft as the moonlight. The quest you seek is not one of gaining, but of losing. Lose the veil of envy, and you shall find what your heart truly desires. Unsatisfied with her counsel, Eldrin set forth to prove his worth, challenging the nightingale to a contest of song, the peacock to a display of beauty, and the turtle to a test of patience. Yet with each endeavor, Eldrin found himself more disheartened, for the gifts of others were not his to claim. Exhausted and defeated, Eldrin returned to the wise old owl, his heart heavy with sorrow. I have failed, he confessed, for I could not surpass those whom I envied. The owl regarded him with a gentle gaze. Eldrin, she said, in your pursuit of others' gifts, you overlooked the greatest gift of all, your own. Your wings carry you to heights none can reach. Your eyes see truths that remain hidden to others and your strength protects the forest. Embrace who you are, for your worth is unique and cannot be measured by the gifts of others. Moved by the owl's wisdom, Eldrin took flight, soaring higher than ever before. As he climbed, the envy that had weighed upon his heart fell away, revealing a profound sense of freedom and self-acceptance. From the lofty heights, he saw the forest and the riverbank anew, not as places of comparison and envy, but as a tapestry of unique gifts woven together in harmony. Corvus's voice softened as the tale drew to a close. And so Eldrin the envious eagle learned the value of contentment and the dangers of envy. He discovered that true peace comes not from possessing what others have, but from cherishing and nurturing one's own gifts. The creatures of the riverbank sat in thoughtful silence, reflecting on Eldrin's journey. In the embrace of the night, they understood that envy dims the light of one's own virtues, while acceptance and self-worth illuminate the path to genuine contentment. In the vast expanse of the jungle that whispered secrets of the ages through its dense canopy and vibrant underbrush, there roamed a leopard named Lyra. Lyra was as beautiful as she was swift, her coat a tapestry of golden hues marked with the night's own stars. Yet, for all her grace and might, Lyra wandered the jungle's paths alone her heart a cavern echoing with the pangs of solitude. As the creatures of the riverbank nestled closer, the air thick with anticipation for another of Corvus's tales, 
the crocodile's voice unfurled like the river's current, gentle yet persistent. This evening I bring you the tale of Lyra, the lonely leopard, a journey of longing, discovery, and the embrace of vulnerability as a bridge to companionship. Lyra, in her solitude, yearned for connection, for someone to share in the marvels of the jungle and the whispers of the wind. She watched from the shadows as the parrots painted the sky with laughter and the monkeys wove the trees into a tapestry of kinship, her heart aching with a desire to belong. One moonlit night, Corvus continued, his voice a balm to the hushed listeners. Lyra approached the wise old python, who slumbered coiled upon the ancient fig tree, its roots a testament to time itself. Oh, wise one, Lyra implored, I am tired of wandering alone. How may I find companionship in a world that fears my shadow and flees from my approach? The wise old python, with eyes like molten amber, regarded Lyra thoughtfully. Lyra, he hissed softly, to find companionship, you must first let others see the heart beneath the spots. Show them your vulnerability, for in vulnerability lies the strength to connect, to build bridges where walls once stood. Puzzled yet intrigued by the python's counsel, Lyra ventured forth, determined to reveal the depths of her heart to those she longed to call friends. She approached the parrots, her voice a gentle murmur, sharing tales of the night's beauty and the secrets of the stars. To the monkeys she offered her swiftness, playing games of chase that turned the jungle into a playground of joy. With each act of vulnerability, Lyra's world transformed. The creatures of the jungle, once wary of her shadow, began to see the light of her spirit. They saw not a predator, but a protector, a friend with a heart as vast as the jungle itself. Corvus's tail wove a spell of warmth around the listeners, his words painting pictures of Lyra's transformation. And so, Lyra the Lonely Leopard discovered that her strength did not lie solely in her might, but in her willingness to be seen, to share her true self with the world around her. In her vulnerability, she found the companionship she had longed for, and the jungle sang with the harmony of newfound bonds. The creatures of the riverbank sat in silent contemplation, the tale of Lyra echoing within their hearts. In the soft glow of the moon, they understood that true companionship requires the courage to be open, to share one's vulnerabilities, and to embrace the strength found in unity. As the night embraced the world in its silent hug, the tales of Corvus, the wise crocodile, continued to weave their magic, transforming hearts and opening minds along the riverbank. Among the myriad of listeners, drawn to the warmth of shared stories and the glow of newfound understanding, there was a young deer named Dara. Dara, with eyes wide and a heart untainted by the shadows of doubt, found herself deeply moved by the tales of courage, vulnerability and companionship. This evening, as Corvus's voice danced with the whispers of the wind, Dara felt a stirring within her soul, a call to action that could not be ignored. Tonight, Corvus began, his gaze encompassing the gathered assembly. I wish to share not a tale from the past, but a hope for our future. Dara, feeling the weight of the moment, stepped forward, her voice a gentle echo in the hush of anticipation. Friends, she began, her gaze lingering on each face, each pair of eyes that met hers in the moonlit clearing. We have been gifted with wisdom through these tales. 
wisdom that speaks of seeing beyond fears, of embracing the true essence of our beings. It is now within our power to weave these lessons into the fabric of our community. The creatures of the riverbank their attention captured by the young deer's earnestness, listened as she spoke of Corvus, not as the feared predator of old tales, but as the compassionate storyteller who had opened his heart and the depths of his wisdom to them all. Corvus has shown us the strength found in vulnerability, the beauty in diversity, and the power of unity, Dara continued her voice growing in confidence. He has, through his stories, become an ally, a friend. It is time we see him as such, to welcome him not with whispers of fear, but with the open arms of acceptance. A murmur of agreement fluttered through the crowd, like the first gentle breeze heralding the change of seasons. Dara's words simple yet profound, had touched them, reminding each creature of the moments their hearts had swayed with the tales, how they had seen themselves in the struggles and triumphs of characters from Corvus's stories. Corvus, moved by the unexpected advocacy of the young deer, felt a warmth spread through his being, a sensation unfamiliar yet deeply cherished, Dara, he spoke, his voice reflecting the depth of his gratitude. Your courage to stand for unity, to see beyond the exterior to the heart that beats within, is a gift to us all. In your words, I find not only acceptance, but a hope for a tomorrow where we stand together. Not as predators and prey, but as companions sharing the journey of life. The night grew silent, a canvas upon which a new understanding was painted, vibrant with the colours of acceptance and unity. One by one, the creatures of the riverbank approached Corvus, their gestures and words weaving a tapestry of friendship that blanketed the clearing in a warmth that rivaled the sun's embrace. As the newfound warmth of unity and acceptance settled over the riverbank, a remarkable transformation began. The night, once a time of solitude and silence, now thrummed with the vibrant energy of community. Dara, the young deer whose courage had sparked a flame of change, watched with joy as her friends and neighbours gathered around Corvus, the once-feared crocodile, now a beloved storyteller and friend. The moon, a silent witness to the unfolding magic, cast its silver glow upon the clearing, turning it into a stage for the most extraordinary of evenings. Let this night, Corvus proclaimed, his voice resonating with a deep, heartfelt emotion. Be a night of shared stories, where each voice is heard, each tale valued, weaving the fabric of our community stronger with every word. One by one, the animals step forward, emboldened by the spirit of the night and the open heart surrounding them. There was Hara, the hare, who recounted tales of narrow escapes and the thrill of the chase, her eyes alight with the excitement of survival and the sweetness of life. Each creature listened, finding within her stories a reflection of their own fears, hopes, and the ceaseless marvel of existence. Then came Bolu, the wise old owl, who shared whispers of the night, secrets only the moon could tell. His tales were of the silent wisdom found in the stillness, of the beauty in the unseen, teaching all present to look beyond the surface, to find the magic hidden in the shadows and the quiet. As the night deepened, so did the tales, each story a thread in the vibrant tapestry of life that adorned the riverbank. Laughter mingled with tears, 
and all with understanding, as each tale revealed the interconnectedness of their lives, the shared experiences that bound them closer than they had ever realized. Corvus, too, shared more of his own tales, not of other creatures, but of his life beneath the waters, of the dreams that danced in the depths and the solace he found in the embrace of the river. His stories, like his heart, were deep and wide, offering a glimpse into the soul of a creature once judged by his exterior alone. The night of shared stories became a beacon of light in the darkness, a symbol of the unity and acceptance that had blossomed on the riverbank. Differences were celebrated fears acknowledged and shared, and, in the sharing, diminished. The animals discovered common ground not in their appearances or their strengths, but in the universal language of the heart. In the tales that spoke of love, loss, courage, and the endless pursuit of happiness. As dawn painted the sky with the first blush of morning, the creatures of the riverbank stood together, a community united not just by proximity, but by the bonds of understanding and respect forged through the power of shared stories. Corvus, looking around at the faces illuminated by the rising sun, felt a profound sense of belonging. Here, among these creatures, he had found not just acceptance, but family. In the glow of the new dawn, as the first rays of sunlight kissed the dew-laden grass, the riverbank awoke to a world transformed. The night of shared stories had not only illuminated the darkness, but had also built an invisible bridge, one that connected every heart and soul along the river's embrace. This bridge, forged from the courage to share and the strength found in vulnerability, had Corvus the crocodile at its very heart. Corvus, once a solitary figure whose presence stirred fear and suspicion, now stood as the cornerstone of a community united by the power of understanding and empathy. The tales shared under the moon's watchful eye had served as the stones of this bridge. Each story a testament to the shared experiences that transcended species, size or scales. The animals, once divided by instinct and prejudice, now looked upon one another with new eyes. Where they saw difference, they now saw diversity. Where there was fear, now there was curiosity. And in place of isolation, there was a burgeoning sense of belonging. The riverbank, once a place of silent coexistence, buzzed with the lively energy of a community eager to explore the depths of these newfound bonds. As the day unfolded, the animals gathered once more, not for a meeting marked by the urgency of survival, but for a celebration of unity. They shared food, stories and laughter, each moment weaving the fabric of their community tighter, stronger. Corvus, at the centre of it all, felt a warmth spreading through his large reptilian heart. A warmth that had little to do with the sun's rays and everything to do with the light of acceptance and friendship. The young deer, Dara, who had been the first to cross the bridge Corvus had built with his stories, looked around at the gathered animals with pride and joy. This bridge, she said, her voice clear and bright, is not just a path over a river or a divide between lands. It is a bridge of bonds, of hearts and minds, coming together to create something stronger than any of us could be on our own. And so, the riverbank became a place of stories, not just those of the crocodile, but of every creature that called it home. These stories, shared freely and received with open hearts, served as the mortar that held the stones of the bridge firm, 
ensuring that it will withstand the trials of time and the inevitable challenges that lay ahead. Corvus, the once lonely crocodile, found himself at the center of a world he had never dared to dream of. A world where he was not just accepted, but valued. Not just tolerated, but loved. His tears, once shed in solitude, now flowed freely in the company of friends, a symbol of the deep emotions that ran beneath his rugged exterior. The Bridge of Bonds stood as a testament to the power of stories to transcend barriers, to heal wounds, and to bring together those who might otherwise have remained apart. It was a reminder that beneath the surface, whether covered in fur, feathers or scales, beat hearts eager for connection, understanding and the shared joy of community. This concludes the sixth and final part of chapter two in The Crocodile's Tears. Through the simple yet profound act of sharing their stories, the creatures of the riverbank discovered the strength found in unity and the beauty of diversity. In the heart of this newfound harmony stood Corvus, the crocodile, whose tears had once symbolized the pain of isolation, but now represented the joy of belonging, a beacon of hope, and a symbol of the enduring power of empathy and friendship. Chapter 3 the awakening of the riverbank. In the heart of the verdant realm that lay along the gentle curve of the river, a new day dawned, a day unlike any other, for it marked the beginning of an era where the whispers of the past mingled with the hopes of the future. The riverbank, once a mere backdrop to the solitary pursuits of survival, had awakened to the melody of unity its rhythm set by the beating hearts of its myriad inhabitants. The creatures, great and small, had been touched by the tales shared in the shadow of the moon. Tales that had woven a tapestry of empathy and understanding across the diverse tapestry of life that thrived in this haven. Moved by an invisible force, a call that resonated with the core of their beings. They convened once more at the water's edge, the site of their recent revelation. This gathering was not summoned by the urgent cries of warning or the territorial calls that once fragmented the air. Instead, it was the gentle yet insistent pull of curiosity and a newfound sense of kinship that drew them together. The animals arrived in twos and threes, some tentative, others bold, but all united by a desire to partake in the magic that had begun to transform their world. At the center of this assembly stood Corvus, the crocodile whose tears had become the seeds of change. Around him, the faces of those who had once recoiled in fear now looked on with eyes alight with understanding. There was Dara, the young deer whose courage had bridged worlds. Tarn, the wise old turtle, whose slow, steady presence offered a foundation of calm. And Lyra, the swift, vibrant kingfisher, whose flashes of color mirrored the spark of joy that this new dawn had ignited. As the creatures settled, a hush fell over the gathering, a canvas of silence ready to be painted with the vibrant hues of their shared stories. Corvus, feeling the weight of the moment, cleared his throat, his voice a deep rumble that echoed the river's flow. Friends, he began, his gaze sweeping over the assembly. We stand at the brink of a new beginning. The stories we have shared have opened our eyes to the beauty of our diversity and the strength of our unity. Let this gathering be a testament to our commitment to listen, to understand, and to grow together. 
Nods and murmurs of agreement rippled through the crowd, each creature moved by the sincerity of Corvus's words. It was then decided, with an air of solemnity and excitement, that the riverbank would become a sanctuary of stories, a place where every voice, no matter how small or timid, would be heard and valued. One by one, they came forward to share their tales. Stories of courage and fear, of loss and discovery, of the mundane and the miraculous. Each story, a thread in the ever-expanding tapestry of their community, strengthened the bonds that had begun to form and illuminated the commonalities that bridged their differences. The gathering of the creatures marked not just a moment of collective awakening, but the birth of a tradition that would define the essence of the riverbank. In the sharing of stories, they found not only understanding, but also a wellspring of empathy that nourished their spirits and inspired a sense of belonging that transcended the boundaries of species and instinct. As the sun dipped low, casting long shadows and painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson. The creatures dispersed, carrying with them the warmth of the connection they had forged. The riverbank, once a silent witness to their solitary lives, now echoed with the laughter and whispers of a community united by the power of their shared stories. This was the awakening of the riverbank, a testament to the transformative power of empathy and the enduring strength of unity. In the heart of this transformation was a simple truth, revealed through the tears of a crocodile. Beneath the myriad forms of life, there flows a river of shared experiences, a current that connects us all, reminding us that we are, in essence, not so different after all. As the days lengthened and the warmth of the sun kissed the riverbank with renewed promise, the creatures of the river convened once more under the canopy that danced with the whispers of the wind. Among them, a palpable sense of anticipation hung in the air, for it was known that Corvus, the crocodile whose heart had proven as deep as the river itself, was to share his final tale. This gathering was different. The air thrummed with a quiet reverence. The creatures, from the tiniest insect to the most majestic bird, settled around Corvus in a wide circle, their eyes reflecting the golden hue of the setting sun. The crocodile took his place at the water's edge, his eyes scanning the faces before him, each one a friend, a confidant, a part of the tapestry of his life. With a deep breath that seemed to draw in the very essence of the river, Corvus began, his voice soft yet clear, carrying across the water and into the hearts of his audience. Long before our tales interwove, before the first tear fell from my eye, I lived a life shadowed by fear, he started his gaze distant, as if peering into a past only he could see. Fear of being misunderstood. Fear of the loneliness that clung to me like the morning mist to the river's surface. But deeper still was the fear of revealing my true self, of reaching out only to be met with rejection. A hush fell over the gathering, the weight of Corvus's words settling upon them like a gentle shroud. Here was their friend, the storyteller, the weaver of tales, laying bare his soul. I roamed the river, a spectre among the reeds, watching life bloom around me, yet feeling apart from its vibrancy. My heart, heavy with untold stories, yearned for connection, for a chance to reveal the dreams that danced in the quiet of my mind. Corvus paused, his eyes reflecting the last rays of the sun as it dipped below the horizon, 
painting the sky in shades of fire and twilight. But then, a change whispered through the reeds, a murmur of hope ignited by the courage of one small deer. Through her eyes, I saw a future where the river's song was not one of solitude, but of unity. It was then I realized that my tales, my fears, my dreams had the power to bridge the chasm of misunderstanding, to weave a bond stronger than the currents that divide us. The creatures listened, spellbound, as Corvus's tale unfolded, a narrative not of a fearsome predator, but of a soul as vulnerable and as hopeful as their own. With each word, the crocodile wove the essence of his being into a tapestry that mirrored the collective spirit of the riverbank. In sharing my tales, I found not only acceptance, but a family among the reeds and waters of our home. My fears, once chains that bound me, became the roots that anchored me to this place, to all of you. My dreams, once distant stars, now shine in the reflection of your eyes, guiding me to a tomorrow where our tales continue to intertwine. As Corvus's story came to a close, the creatures of the riverbank sat in a silence that was both reflective and profound. In the crocodile's final tale, they had seen the mirror of their own fears and dreams a reflection of the journey that had brought them to this moment of unity and understanding. The gathering rose as one, a chorus of voices lifted in gratitude and respect, encircling Corvus in a bond of fellowship that transcended the boundaries of nature. The crocodile, once a solitary figure shadowed by fear, now stood at the heart of a community united by the power of shared stories. This was the awakening of the riverbank, a testament to the transformative power of empathy and the enduring strength of unity. In the heart of this transformation was a simple truth, revealed through the tears of a crocodile. Beneath the myriad forms of life, there flows a river of shared experiences, a current that connects us all, reminding us that we are, in essence, not so different after all. In the wake of Corvus's heartfelt revelation, a gentle transformation began to ripple across the riverbank, touching the heart of every creature that called it home. The once imperceptible barriers built from misconceptions and fears, started to crumble, washed away by the tide of understanding that flowed from the crocodile's final tale. The animals, inspired by the depth of connection they had experienced, looked upon each other with new eyes. The scales of judgment and prejudice fell away, revealing the beauty of diversity that thrived amongst them. It was as if the river itself had whispered ancient secrets into their hearts, teaching them the language of empathy and the melody of mutual respect. The gatherings at the riverbank became a sanctuary, a place where tales were not just told but lived, where every voice was heard and every story valued. The eagle, once envious, now soared high a guardian of the skies, her heart as wide as the horizon. The frog, whose courage had once faltered, now leaped with confidence, his croak a song of bravery that echoed through the reeds. And the leopard, once shrouded in loneliness, prowled the banks with a quiet grace, his spots a testament to the beauty found in being unique. Even the smallest of creatures, those often overlooked, found their place within this tapestry of unity. The ants, architects of the undergrowth, marched in harmony with the rhythms of the earth, their industry a symbol of perseverance. The bees, 
keepers of the blue, dance from flower to flower, their buzz a reminder of the interconnectedness of life. Corvus, once a silent observer, now stood as a beacon of hope, his presence a bridge between worlds. The animals, in their wisdom, had come to see the crocodile not as a predator lurking in the depths, but as a friend who walked beside them, a fellow traveller on the journey of life. As the seasons turned, so too did the tides of the riverbank. Where once fear had flowed, now ran rivers of kindness, carving pathways of compassion in the soft earth. The creatures learned to cherish their differences, for in diversity lay their strength. They understood that each had a role to play in the tapestry of the ecosystem, a thread that contributed to the vibrant mosaic of their world. This profound change was not confined to the water's edge. It radiated outward, a beacon of light that touched the hearts of all who wandered into the realm of the riverbank. Travelers, both feathered and furred, brought tales of the transformation they had witnessed, Stories of a place where harmony blossomed like the lotus on the water, where the tears of a crocodile had watered the seeds of change. The riverbank, once a mere backdrop to the drama of survival, had awakened to a new dawn. It stood as a testament to the power of stories to bridge the gap between hearts, to the ability of empathy to transform the landscape of fear into a garden of unity. In the heart of this awakening was a simple truth, a lesson learned from the tales shared beneath the canopy of stars, that beneath the varied exteriors of scale, feather and fur beats the heart of kinship, a pulse that connects all life in a symphony of shared existence. And so, the river flowed on, a witness to the turn of the tides, its waters a mirror reflecting the unity of the riverbank. In its depths, the faces of the creatures could be seen, not as reflections of their past fears, but as portraits of their newfound understanding, a community united by the power of kindness and the enduring strength of diversity. Thus, the awakening of the riverbank was not merely an end, but a beginning, a promise of the endless possibilities that bloom when hearts open to the beauty of difference, and life dances to the rhythm of acceptance. As the season of renewal adorned the riverbank with the vibrant hues of new beginnings, the creatures of the riverbank decided to commemorate their journey of understanding with a grand festival. It was to be a celebration unlike any before, a festival that would weave together the threads of their shared stories into a tapestry of unity and joy. At the heart of this celebration was Corvus, the crocodile, whose tales had been the key that unlocked the door to empathy and mutual respect among them. The preparations for the festival were a spectacle of cooperation and creativity. The birds, led by the once envious eagle, now a symbol of grace and leadership, adorned the canopy with garlands of flowers and ribbons that mirrored the colors of the rainbow. The ants and the bees, those tireless workers contributed by setting up the festival grounds, ensuring every leaf and petal was in place, creating a natural amphitheater beside the river's gentle flow. Rivers. As the day of the festival dawned, the riverbank was transformed into a realm of enchantment. Lanterns made from bioluminescent bugs cast a soft glow, illuminating the faces of the attendees with a magical light. The air was filled with the sweet harmony of the birdsong, accompanied by the rhythmic percussion of the frogs, creating a melody that resonated with the heartbeat of the riverbank. 
The highlight of the festival was the circle of stories, a sacred space where the creatures gathered to share tales of courage, friendship and love. Corvus was given the place of honour, seated at the head of the circle, his scales shimmering in the twilight. One by one, the animals came forward, each sharing a story, a memory or a dream, their voices weaving a rich narrative of their collective journey towards understanding and acceptance. The leopard, once lonely, spoke of the bonds of friendship that had formed his voice a soft purr of gratitude. The frog, his eyes gleaming with courage, recounted tales of adventure and bravery that had inspired his leap of faith. And the eagle, soaring high above, dropped feathers as gifts, each one a symbol of her newfound contentment and the beauty of embracing one's path. As the night deepened, the festival became a mirror, reflecting the unity of the community. Laughter and song filled the air, blurring the lines between predator and prey, winged and earthbound, as all danced together under the canopy of stars. The river itself seemed to join in the celebration, its waters sparkling with reflected light, a testament to the enduring power of shared stories and the bridges they build. In a moment of solemn reverence, the creatures gathered around Corvus, placing upon his head a crown woven from reeds and flowers, anointing him not as a feared predator, but as a cherished member of their community. Tears of joy, not unlike the mythical tears of a crocodile, shimmered in the eyes of many, for this was a symbol of their collective transformation, a testament to the power of understanding to overcome fear and prejudice. The festival of understanding became a tradition, a yearly reminder of the journey from misunderstanding to empathy, from isolation to community. It was a celebration that transcended the riverbank its stories carried by the winds to distant lands, spreading the message of unity and the transformative power of listening with an open heart. As dawn broke, painting the sky with the first light of morning, the creatures of the riverbank rested, nestled together in a mosaic of fur, feather and scale. In the quiet afterglow of the festival, the riverbank slept, a beacon of hope in a world often divided, a living testament to the awakening that comes when hearts open to the stories of others, and life is celebrated in all its diversity. Thus, the festival of understanding was not just an end to their journey, but a beacon for the future, a legacy of the riverbank that would ripple through generations, reminding all of the enduring power of empathy, the beauty of diversity, and the unbreakable bonds of community forged in the heart of understanding. In the heart of the riverbank, beneath the ancient boughs and alongside the whispering waters, a profound transformation had taken place. The creatures, once divided by fear and misunderstanding, had found a unity so deep and pure that it seemed to have always been a part of the landscape. At the center of this transformation was Corvus, the crocodile, whose tears had once been misunderstood as mere trickery, but had now come to symbolize something far greater, the depth of emotion and the power of vulnerability in forging true connections. As the new day dawned, washing the world in golden light, the riverbank was alive with the buzz of creatures, each going about their day with a newfound sense of purpose and belonging. Yet, amidst the hustle and bustle, there was a silent acknowledgement, a shared understanding that their lives had been irrevocably changed by the stories shared and the tears shed in their circle of trust. 
the legacy of the crocodile's tears had become a cornerstone of their community. A reminder that true strength lies not in the might of one's jaws or the sharpness of one's claws, but in the courage to show one's true self, to share one's fears and dreams openly. It was a lesson that reverberated through the hearts of all who had witnessed the transformation. A lesson that transcended species, size and stature. Elders told the tale of the crocodile's tears to the young, weaving the story into the fabric of their culture. It was a tale that spoke of the crocodile, who, through his vulnerability, had shown them all a new way to live, a way that embraced differences and celebrated the shared emotions that bound them together. The tears of Corvus were no longer seen as a sign of weakness, but as a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of empathy and understanding. As seasons changed and years rolled by, the legacy of the crocodile's tears inspired the riverbank creatures to create a sanctuary, a place where any creature, no matter how feared or misunderstood, could come and share their story, find a listening ear and a compassionate heart. This sanctuary, nestled in the heart of the riverbank, became a haven of peace and understanding, drawing creatures from far and wide, each seeking the magic that had transformed a community. The legacy of the crocodile's tears also inspired a tradition, the festival of tears held at the cusp of each new season. It was a time when the riverbank creatures would gather not just to share stories, but to celebrate the beauty of vulnerability, to honor the tears shed in the journey towards understanding. It was a festival that saw laughter and tears alike, where every emotion was embraced and every creature was seen for who they truly were. And so, the legacy of the crocodile's tears wove its way into the very essence of the riverbank. A legacy that spoke of a journey from isolation to community, from fear to love. It was a reminder that beneath the surface, behind the scales, feathers and fur, lay hearts that beat with the same hopes and dreams. Hearts that ached with the same fears and sorrows. In the end, the legacy of the crocodile's tears was more than just a tale passed from generation to generation. It was a living, breathing testament to the transformative power of vulnerability. A beacon of hope that guided the riverbank through times of darkness and light. It was a legacy that whispered of a simple truth, that in sharing our stories, in showing our tears, we find not just understanding, but a deep, enduring connection to the world around us. And in the heart of the riverbank, Corvus, once a figure of fear, now stood as a symbol of unity. His tears a bridge that had brought together a world of creatures in a bond that would endure through the ages. A reminder that even the most misunderstood among us have stories that, when shared, have the power to heal to unite, and to awaken the deepest empathy within us all. As the first light of dawn crept over the horizon, bathing the riverbank in a soft golden glow, a sense of peace and unity pervaded the air. It was a new day, not just in the literal sense, but in the hearts and spirits of all who called the riverbank home. The transformation that had taken place was palpable, a shift towards coexistence and friendship that had been inspired by the crocodile's journey and the tales shared from the heart. The once quiet and cautious mornings were now filled with the sounds of laughter and conversation, as creatures of all kinds gathered to start their day together. Birds that once soared high above keeping to themselves, now perched alongside the riverbank creatures, 
sharing stories and seeds. The rabbits, who had burrowed deep into the earth in fear, now hopped freely, their laughter mingling with the rustling leaves. At the heart of this transformed community was Corvus, the crocodile, whose journey from outcast to cherished member of the riverbank had sparked a revolution of sorts. His story, a testament to the power of vulnerability and empathy, had inspired a wave of change that swept across the riverbank, encouraging creatures to open their hearts and embrace their differences. The new dawn on the riverbank was not just a testament to the change in season, but a symbol of the profound shift in the way the creatures related to one another. The fears and misconceptions that had once kept them apart had been replaced by a deep-seated understanding and respect for the stories that each creature carried. The riverbank had become a tapestry of tales, each thread woven with the colours of empathy, compassion and friendship. In this new era, the riverbank flourished like never before. The trees seemed to stand a little taller, their leaves a richer shade of green, as if they too were basking in the joy of the community's newfound unity. The waters of the river flowed more gently, reflecting the peace that had settled over the land. The changes went beyond the surface, touching the very essence of the riverbank's ecosystem. Predators and prey found a balance, a mutual respect that allowed for coexistence without fear. The abundance of the land was shared, with each creature taking only what they needed, ensuring that all could thrive. The new dawn brought with it a tradition of storytelling that became the cornerstone of the riverbank's culture. Every evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the sky in hues of orange and pink, the creatures would gather around the great willow, the heart of their community. There, under the watchful eyes of the stars, they would share tales of their ancestors, lessons from their past, and dreams for the future. These gatherings were a time of celebration, a way to honour the journey they had all undertaken together. The story served as a reminder of the paths they had walked, the obstacles they had overcome, and the bonds they had formed. It was a time of reflection, but also of looking forward, of dreaming of what the riverbank could become if they continued to nurture the seeds of understanding and friendship they had sown. As the new day dawned on the riverbank, it was clear that the legacy of the crocodile's tears had given birth to a new era, one where the heart was the true measure of strength. The riverbank stood as a beacon of hope, a testament to the fact that even in a world of differences, common ground could be found and friendship could flourish. And so, as the creatures of the riverbank embarked on their daily routines, there was a sense of gratitude in the air, a collective appreciation for the gift of unity they had been given. The riverbank, once a place of division and fear, had awakened to a new dawn of coexistence and friendship, inspired by the crocodile's journey and the shared tales of the heart. It was a new beginning, a promise of what could be when hearts are open and stories are shared, a reminder that even the most unlikely of friendships can illuminate the darkest of times, bringing forth a dawn filled with light, love and endless possibilities. In the heart of the forest, by the gently flowing river, the legend of the crocodile and the riverbank animals became a beacon of wisdom, its echoes reaching far beyond the lush greenery and into the hearts of all who heard it. The tale, 
woven with threads of empathy, understanding, and the unseen depths within us all, was passed down through generations, becoming a timeless narrative that transcended the riverbank itself. As the years turned into decades, and the decades into centuries, the story evolved, but its essence remained untouched by time. It was a tale that spoke to the soul, a reminder of the power of stories to bridge divides and foster connections that defy the apparent boundaries of nature. The legend of the crocodile, once feared and misunderstood, now revered for his courage to share his heart, served as a guiding light for the young. Parents whispered the tales to their children under the canopy of stars, instilling in them the values of empathy and understanding. Teachers shared the stories in circles of eager listeners, using them as lessons in compassion and the strength found in vulnerability. The riverbank, once a mere backdrop to the unfolding drama, became a character in its own right, a symbol of the community that can be forged when individuals come together, sharing their fears, dreams and stories. It stood as a testament to the transformation that occurs when hearts are open and minds are willing to understand the world from another's perspective. In every retelling, the characters came to life anew. Corvus, the crocodile with the heart of a poet, the fearful frog who found his courage, the envious eagle who learned to find joy in his own flight, and the lonely leopard who discovered strength in companionship. Each story, a thread in the fabric of the legend, taught the listeners a new lesson, a new way to see the world and their place within it. The legend lived on, not just as a memory of what had been, but as a promise of what could be. It inspired acts of kindness, encouraging creatures of all kinds to look beyond the surface, to see the unseen depths within those they encountered. It fostered a culture of empathy, where understanding and compassion were valued above all else, where the courage to share one's story was met with open hearts and minds. As the river continued to flow, as it had for eons before, it whispered the legend to all who would listen, its waters carrying the legacy of the crocodile's tears to distant lands. The trees too bore witness, their leaves rustling with the tales of old, ensuring that the story would never be forgotten. And in this way, the legend of the crocodile and the riverbank animals became more than just a story. It became a living, breathing entity, a part of the very essence of the forest and its inhabitants. It was a reminder that even in a world where differences might seem insurmountable, there exists...